Last August, the uh, Lake Smart crew visited us and uh, we were talking about boating safety and then they talked about the invasive species. And this purple loosestrife came up and we had no idea that these beautiful purple flowers were an invasive species. So this is great because we said we would release beetles on our property. They only feed on purple loosestrife. So once they have consumed all of the loosestrife in the area, they will either move to a new patch or they will die off. So that's a beetle there, yeah. Cool. Ooh. So we can do this together for you if you want. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> and what happens if you don't control the purple loosestrife? Well, purple loosestrife spreads very quickly, and they're really effective at uh, choking out all the native plants in the area. Uh -huh. So the wetland here is actually at risk if we let leave it unchecked for many years. This is our purple loosestrife bundle with the beetles sitting on it. If you can see, they're the little yellow, little yellow guys right there. If it's on your property, we recommend that you report it to EdMaps and you can help eradicate it by careful digging, hand pulling and cutting. It is important to do so before seeding occurs and without caution, removal efforts can cause further spread of the purple loosestrife. And once you've removed it from the ground, you want to put it in a plastic bag and let it bake in the sun for about three days. You want to avoid putting it in a compost bin or in the bush because you will actually spread it further. Purple loosestrife blooms in late June to August and can be identified by the five to six purple pink flowers around a yellow center. And its most defining characteristic is a square stalk that can stand up to two meters high. So that will really set it apart from the native species in the area.